What's up guys? So yet again, I welcome you back to another awesome video joined by the Devon and Cornwall police, accompanied by Owen, the legend himself. Today, I am holding the Ultralight 1000 with a really unique opportunity with Karen, who's actually hiding in the van, to give you guys a complete run through on everything speed camera vans. Now, ever since I've been into modified cars, guys, there has been so many questions that I have wondered myself in regards to speed camera vans, penalty points, and everything, whether they can or whether they can't see it, and what you can get away with. So guys, stay tuned. Me and Owen are about to introduce you to Karen, who is in charge of the camera itself. But let's jump inside the van now and give you guys a complete breakdown. You can come out now. Hello. So welcome, Karen. Karen's got the, uh, the main laser device that we use here, and she's now gonna tell you a bit about that, how it's used, and then she'll show it being used in the van for you. So yeah, thanks, Owen. So this is the Ultralight 1000 that we use in our vans, and this basically assesses speeds on the road, um, and it can reach 1,000 meters. Let's take a look, come on inside, and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so out of interest, now we've had this amazing opportunity to come inside your camera van. Yep. Do you want to give us a rundown as to what you're doing, how you go about setting up? Yeah, of course. So basically, first of all, get the camera out. So this is the stand that it's mounted onto. Also need to get this system up and running, which is the CCTV on the top. And I'll show you a little bit about how we use that as well. So we just switch that on. Oh, very technical. And then you should see that screen come on in a moment. And then obviously that connects to the cameras on the top there. Amazing. And then this laser unit sits on this mounted tripod here, and that sits on, so that's nice and sturdy on there. Wow. So it doesn't matter where you are on the road, um, any vehicles going past, it's steady, so we can still monitor speeds like that. So out of interest, during your yes. normal day's work, are you given a location by your boss and you're told, you know, go to this area, yeah. we've had lots of reports of speeding, Here's Absolutely. a particular place you need to go to, is that how it works? Yeah, so a priority of ours is obviously getting community concerns. So they come through to our officers and then that gets filtered down to us. Okay. Um, and then that's obviously gathered by data out on the streets that mm -hmm. there's a speed problem in that community. And then we'll um, set up, create a site there and then we'll go down and enforce the area. Interesting. So on your normal day then, mm -hmm. once you set up your camera van, do you have a particular list of things you've got to go about doing before you can start your average day's work? Yeah, so basically I have to make sure that everything's set up in accordance to the standards. Mm -hmm. So obviously if I was to assess a vehicle and form the opinion that that vehicle's speeding and then that was to go to court, I need to be able to show that I've set everything up from the manufacturer's recommendations. Okay. And then when I go to court, I can prove that that's what I've done in the day and I also have a report form to fill in um, to know what I've actually done that day. I'm certainly interested, is there a ginormous hard drive in this van that you have just to eliminate any human error? Because what happens if your phone goes off or you sneeze halfway <laughs> through filming someone speeding yeah. and then you think, oh no, I've lost all of that information, what then? Yeah, no, not at all, it's all really secure. So basically we have uh, compact flash cards and that literally sits in there, so it's very small. Um, and any information that we get off our CCTV or the outside cameras, um, basically downloads onto USB. Now, interestingly, mm -hmm. how much do you know about cameras? Because I appreciate that you're the camera lady, so to speak. Do you have a vast knowledge then on cameras outside of your camera van, or is it more just specific to what you do here at work? Absolutely, yeah. So we're trained on what we use here. So my knowledge would be based on using this particular laser unit. And okay. um, that's what I'm trained on. That's what I'm certified in. So. Awesome. Sounds mm -hmm. exciting. So, Karen, as we mentioned just now, we've got a really unique opportunity using my friend's car, actually built by MJ Performance, the Fiesta ST180. Uh -huh. Now, we're going to be using him in order to demonstrate, with your help, how these cameras work, how far away they need to be. Mm -hmm. Would you like to run through exactly how that works to my viewers? Because obviously I can already see the fact that he's wearing his face mask in the car <laughs> on the camera right there. So yeah, you're absolutely right. So currently obviously he's a bit too close. The minimum distance is 20 metres and obviously the furthest I'm able to get is vehicle speeding is a thousand metres. Wow, a kilometre. So yeah, a lot of people Christ. think that they can slow down when they see the van and then speed off and we won't be able to reach them, but obviously a thousand meters, I can <laughs> get you quite wow. far away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what I basically I need to check is that uh, the system's working. So that's the trigger here. That's the noise you can hear that it's actually working. Um, and then this screen here tells me the speed and it also comes up on this screen here too. So once that's all set up with the cameras on top, we're good to go. There he is. There you go, he's gonna be coming round. Okay, so you can see him. So I've got him doing 11 miles an hour at the moment. And also it's really good to be able to try and get the face of the driver as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you can see, it's really clear. And they can't the contest it and say that it wasn't them driving. Obviously Absolutely. that makes sense. That's right, yeah. That's actually really, really interesting. Obviously, thank you so much for showing us that 
police have clearly got the best best technology out there but yeah the st180 has done us good in today's example now hopefully you can show us some more exciting stuff about this van next so karen funny enough we've had loads of questions regarding front plates on motorbikes okay. can you give me a full rundown from a camera lady's perspective yeah. as to how that goes about and what you can do with all of your technology to actually make that work because i'm pretty sure if i'm not mistaken you've got a camera on the roof is that correct I certainly have yeah so it's functioned with this unit here so it's like a joystick basically it turns the camera around 360 so basically as a motorbike is coming towards me obviously i see it on the screen here yeah, yeah. i'll form an opinion that it's speeding um i'll test that pressing the trigger the speed will come up just like this at the bottom there and then yeah if that motorbike is then speeding i know that i can get their number plates from the camera unit system on top Awesome, that sounds super exciting. I really hope that answers their question because mm -hmm. it's definitely been a common one in the comment section. Okay. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, Karen, just before we go take a look at what equipment you have in the front of the van, would you yes. like to run through a couple of the bits and bobs you've got in here from another angle? Because I appreciate you've obviously got this ginormous mount for the camera, yep. but you've also got other ones down there by the window on your right hand side. Yeah. I'm sure they're probably wondering what these are. So we can basically monitor speeds from different angles. So we can use both of these windows here. So they both slide open and we've got different mounts either side. And basically I can transport that camera to this side and this moves along here to get the right adjustment. That's basically used when we do over bridges. So when you see those camera vans parked up on the bridges there going up and down a little bit, getting the position, that's me opening the window, getting the camera over angled to see and assess speeds um, on those roads. Interesting. So now, do you want to take us into the front and we can see what you've got up there too? Yeah, great. Because I'm sure you've got AMPR in there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we do, yeah. Let's go and have a look. So, Karen, now we're joining you in the actual cabin of the speed camera van. Yes. Is there any equipment in here that's different to that of a normal police car? So, basically, we have AMPR in these camera vans. So, um, currently, this is a new software that's been installed into this van. So, this little camera here, it picks up any wedges coming towards the van or going away from the van and that logs onto the police system uh, from this unit here. Okay, awesome. So now, as far as I'm aware, if you're inside the actual camera van, if you like, and you picked up on someone doing something naughty or doing something they shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. does this camera automatically then add extra evidence for you or is it something that you've got to manually control? So, no, this system basically, um, once it's set up, it runs itself. So the information that it receives from the reg, the number of plates that's going past, goes up onto the large police database. So the police are then able to draw that data and see what cars, for example, don't have insurance or no tax, which links okay. to this. Awesome. Thank you very much. Now, I do really want to jump outside the van and have a full rundown as to how many cameras and all the equipment you've got all over this beast of a machine. Yep. So let's jump out and take a full look around. Right, Karen, we're now outside the van. I appreciate it's Hi. freezing, so we'll do this quickly. No but problem. if you could, please run us yeah. through all the equipment you've got on the outside of this beast of a van. Yeah, so it's a really great vehicle. It's got CCTV all around. So as you can see here, there's two cameras pointing down. So anyone approaching the vehicle from this side, I can see them from interior once I'm sat down in my chair. So I notice you've got a camera on the dashboard as well. Please explain that one. Yeah, so this little one around one that you can see here. So that basically films anyone approaching the van this direction. It's really good security for me because obviously I'm looking out the back there. So I'll be able to see you on the screens um, coming towards the vehicle. It also records uh, whilst I'm driving as well. Cool, so I think if we go take a look around the back, there's one more around there, isn't there? Yeah, there is, yeah, if you come around this side. Yeah, so there's two more cameras here. And again, like I said, once I press record on the inside, it records anyone approaching the back of the vehicle, so it's really good security for me. And also, if you're trying to have a conversation with me here at the back window, it records the audio so I can look back at what you're saying. So I've asked George just to let us do a quick bit on why we use these things, okay? The camera van, as you've seen, is full of technology. It's also painted white. It's fully liveried. It's there for you to see. The fixed sites, they're painted yellow. We put a big sign up to tell you that they're there. And they're also available on GPS. So your Thompson or your Garmin or your Road Angel will know it's there and it will tell you it's there. So it's quite obvious. The only person that's driving your car is you. You should know what the speed limit is, okay? And the only person that makes the decision on how fast you go and controls your car is you. So if you then go past that speed camera and you get caught in excess of the speed limit, even though we give you the thresholds as well between what the speed limit is and where our enforcement starts, 
the only person that's responsible for you breaking the speed limit is you okay so really you can't complain if you get caught by that speed camera because we've given you every opportunity so we're going to go for some lunch now and then afterwards we're going to show you the other things that we do and we're going to show you that thinking time as well this is an lti 2020 it's a handheld laser device a smaller version of what karen showed you in the van okay we'll try and get the next car that comes around the corner um, and see see what speed it's doing well, that's if the ST180 can even get up to 30 mile an hour. This is true. Here we go. As soon as it came around the corner, 26 mile an hour, 114.6 metres away from us. So thanks for getting to the end of the video. Hopefully what you've seen with regards to how we deal with speed is going to be useful to you. Now what we're going to try and demonstrate here is thinking distance. All right. So braking distance, it varies from car to car. So, you know, a standard car on standard brakes isn't going to brake as effectively as maybe a modified car with a big brake kit. So thinking distance is then really, really important. And what I'm going to try and show you here is the difference between driving at 70 mile an hour and 90 mile an hour. So we've set up the cones and that, and I'm going to drive George's car to try and demonstrate how it works. So getting into George's car, trying to negotiate the bucket seat. Okay, I'm not going to wear a seatbelt because we are on private ground here, as you can see. Okay, so what I want you to imagine is that we're traveling on the motorway or a dual carriageway and we're traveling at 70 mile an hour. Now, something's happened in front of me and I'm thinking, right, I need to brake here. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is the thinking time it takes before I actually put my foot on the brake. Okay, so we've got the two cars here and off we go. So we're traveling 70 mile an hour, something's happened this is my thinking time and this is how far I'm going to travel before I even put my foot on the brake okay the Fiesta stopped he was doing 70 mile an hour okay I was doing 90 mile an hour this is how far I've gone hopefully that demonstrates the difference between 70 mile an hour and 90 mile an hour because at 90 mile an hour I've traveled an extra 35 feet before I've even put my foot on the brake people will tell you that speed doesn't kill well Hopefully this demonstrates that it makes a massive difference to how long it takes you to react and how far you will travel before you actually put your foot on the brake.